we're heading to the infamous Tulangi State Forest. This area is crisscrossed with rivers. It's tough, it's wet, it's unrelenting, it's slippery. Oh, I think I'm kind of stuck now. <laughs> so come along for the ride as Life Off-Road explores the Tulangi State Forest. Tulangi State Forest is a popular and notorious area for four-wheel driving. Along with the adventure, we've got our mate James from New Tracks, Steve from Darchi, Mike from Trek Hardware, Dave and Jess from Piranha Off-Road and Greg from Ride Pro. We've had some epic forays up into the region of recent times. Rocky Track, I drove that a couple of years ago with the Big Eye Vico and a camper trailer. And the steps are well known for being tough and unforgiving. And Alan Johnson from Piranha Off-Road rolled his Land Cruiser on that track. Today's gonna to be a little bit different. It's gonna be a lot wetter, but very slippery and we're definitely going to be winching. Simon's organised a few tracks for us today. We're not really sure what's in store, but we'll see what happens, I guess. It's been a while since I've done a really, really hard track. And I was, God, to be honest, I'm looking forward to it. We're in Melbourne's backyard. We're in Tulangi State Forest. This is where you can come and have an absolute truckload of fun. So, James, you've got a stack of the tracks in this area already mapped, haven't you? Tulangi's a fan favourite amongst our user base. Probably got at least a couple of hundred tracks mapped in this area alone. And with a track like this, how does your app help provide information to users? It'll give you information on where the difficult spots are along the, the track itself. It'll give you an indication of who's been up this track previously, the number of vehicles that have been through in the last six months, and even the types of vehicles. Pretty slippery up through here. Plenty of traction off those Mickey Thompsons, no drama at all. Send it through, Steve, send it through. Whilst it's very rocky and lots of tree roots, there's also lots of clay. So as soon as it gets a little bit wet, it's going to be really, really slippery. It's all well and good to have a nice big lift in your car and have it sitting tall. It's very important that the actual spring be set correct for the weight of your vehicle and the type of driving you do. Not only does it give you more clearance, I have a lot more wheel travel and I'll tell you, a lot more comfort. When you're driving these tracks all day, you have a real stiff ride, bounce around the truck, you're not enjoying yourself. So getting your suspension the ride right is very important. You've got to set the right spring for the vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> it did start to rain a little bit. Most people would be upset about that, but I was wrapped because it just meant that the tracks were going to be super slippery and super wet, and that always translates into having a really good time. Many would know that aeroplane track can be a bit of a challenge. It's famous for having really deep ruts, almost as high as the car. Simon was ringing me on here a couple of nights ago saying, yeah, big bog holes, massive dips, massive banks, wet, slidey, muddy. We'd spend nearly the whole day on the one track. Guess what? None of it was there. Unfortunately, the track had just been graded, which we thought was going to make it really easy. But with the rain we'd had and the slippery clay, it actually turned into a big slip and slide. It was absolutely horrible. It was very, very slippery. It was like glass. All right, third gear, low range. We're gonna need some momentum on. This is a slippery sucker. Simon went ahead first and he struggled quite a lot. Just slipping and sliding everywhere. It's just like absolute ice. It would literally go from one side of the track and just slide across. It was making no forward progress at all. That'll be the bank. I'm going to have one more crack at it, then we're going to winch. He ended up having to winch after attempting multiple times. When you're on that glass-like slippery soil, sometimes it gets the better of you and you just need to winch. Basically, his car 
crown to the mound. We've got a quick winch over the top, only probably 10 feet of winching. Now we should get away with just getting ourselves over this lip. Single line pull, nice big tree right handy. A tree trunk around the tree, cable damper over the hook. It was a very simple, easy winch. And we're off again. Come on, stay out of that slippery stuff. Woo! What a ride. Got the Iveco recovered, jumped in, gave it a bit of right pedal, tried to build up as much momentum as I could. The car kept wanting to slide to the left, but luckily there was enough traction there that I could just grab, pull myself back up to the right often enough to get up to that challenging part where Simon got stuck. I also got stuck. Does not want to grip at all. Fine. Back in Just back the car up a little bit, try a slightly different line, a lot more right pedal. It's crazy, isn't it? Tiny little lump. Dash air with all terrain tires. I thought, oh, that's going to be interesting. Go, go, go! Made it to the top. Thanks for your help, guys. I was trying to plan my strategy of how I was going to overcome this, this particular challenge. So I figured speed was my friend. And that worked out really well. I ended up getting up there without too much of a challenge. <laughs> the bulldozers have been along and they filled the ruts in, made a nice smooth surface. The only problem with that, of course, with this rain, it turned to grease. So instead of being a, a rut slugging winch fest, it was power sliding struggle up the hill. Pretty spectacular style, it was a, more sideways and forwards, but it was a lot of fun and I, I don't think any of us mind a bit of a squirt up a muddy hill sometimes. Next, let's go! Alright, ready for me? Stand up, let's go! Let's stick it in high range and give it the beans and let's go for it. It made it up, so happy days. It's always nice to have one up on Simon. It's not very often that happens. Here goes nothing. I was tailing Charlie, so I figured I was gonna have the hardest run because everyone else would make it slippery and worse for me as they got up there, and I suppose you get nervous a little bit. of pepper and that got you up with just uh, plenty of oversteer, understeer, oversteer, understeer, keep doing it until you get to the top. When we did get to the top of the aeroplane track there, you come out of the forest and see out over the valley, it's just great. I haven't been in this area for a while and how the tracks have changed so much and we, we can't nice be clearing on the, on the right hand side that, that had a bit of logging so we actually could see through the forest. Apart from tyres, Mike, that vehicle's built exclusively using products you sell but you've installed it all yourself. Yeah, all of our shops have a great workshop set up. That's one of the things we do well, do a lot of fitting. We've got a fully fledged workshop and one of the focuses in our workshop is finding out exactly what you want done to your car. We want to really get in and find out, hey, all right, where are you going to go? What are you doing with it? What do you want out of it? Do you want more power capacity out of the car? Do you want it set up with accessories inside? Are you towing a caravan? Do you want suspension upgrades? We do the whole lot in-house. Get into our store, you'll see that all the stuff we have is all tried and tested and absolutely fantastic products.
we'd hit the top of the ridge line, enjoyed the view, and then somebody looked at the time and thought, wow, we're way ahead of schedule because we expected the aeroplane track to be way harder than it was. Fortunately, we had James from New Track on the trip. We had to find a new place to go. Luckily, there's an app for that. Pulled up the New Tracks app. Had a look and he's got some amazing data, what's gone on, who's been here, what type of vehicle they were using. Got us down through the fernery, nice tight tree track. We ended up coming down Klondike Road and then hanging a right-hand turn down Klondike Link Track. We all headed for Martin's Track and then it just dropped down this spur line. I really had to be concentrating on the track because it was really rocky, it was really tight and it was very steep. It was a really steep decline and considering we were climbing most of the way for the start of the morning to get onto something that nice and steep was good. So driving down the other side of the mountain, it's amazing how much this country changed. We went from this slick, grease, mud area. We came to the other side of the mountain where the sun can get to it, the wind gets to it. The ground dried up pretty quick and the rocks started getting exposed. It became a rockier track. You just gotta watch your distance between the vehicles, just to make sure you don't slide. And yeah, first gear to low brain, just let it crawl away and let it make its way down. Prana car was looking a bit nervous. There was a passenger inside there that hadn't done any of this before. Dave, how's it going for you? <laughs> yep, we're bouncing around and sliding around. So when we're coming back down, this is when Mike's giving me some pointers over the radio. He's not using his lower end of gearing because he's hooked on the brake. <laughs> and he's like, uh, you know, stay off the brakes and let the gearbox do the work and, you know, all this sort of stuff. And I think he's got too much air in his tyres and he should put some more stuff in the back of that tread, but I've got to wait and then keep it going. Good comments from the peanut gallery. It's good to have someone helping you over the radio while you're going, so, yeah. Short tray is perfect for this. Gives you a much better departure angle when you're coming out of that steep stuff. Doesn't drag the corner on the ground like the longer tray would. So we've got our premium aluminium tray in matte black, the 1500 version, which is our shorty tray. Perfect for departure angles at this sort of full drive work. This tray has also got our trundle drawer fitted so you can store all your snatch straps and recovery gear in the drawer. The steel runners bolt to steel chassis mounts, which gives it a lot of strength. It is one of the most solid aluminium trays on the market in its price range. Then we were going down this really rocky, kind of almost rainforesty type descent. It was really tight and it was very steep heading down into a, ultimately what turned out to be a creek. We then navigated our way up to Martin's Track, which has a really cool river crossing, which again is pretty rare in the Talangi region. So we come out down here down to Clartha Creek. Now I've been coming up here for a long number of years and it's been a long time since I've been here. Like all high country river crossings, you're not quite sure whether it's going to be shallow, whether it's going to be fast flowing. So I watched Simon go across. That was relatively narrow. It was a fairly short river crossing. I went through and tried to generate a bow wave because yeah, I'm in the Prado. We're obviously very different vehicle heights to what the Oveco is. It became pretty clear. It was a nice firm base. It was a really good exit. Not too deep, maybe about a foot and a half deep as you're going across. And then a beautiful climb up the other side of it. And the other side of the creek is a really nice hill climb. Goes up the top, on the ridge, duck down along a fence line, back up the ridge again. Really good fun driving. Not stupidly difficult, but just really enjoyable. Alrighty, <coughs> so I've just done the creek crossing. Apparently this is a big, long, steep incline, so i sent a diff lock in, and we'll just very carefully point our way up. Just out of the water crossing on Martin's track. Really good climb coming out of it. Straight back into it. Second low, I've got the rear locker in just because I can. Don't really need it, but if you've got it, why not use it? Enough to throw the phones out of the holder. A bit bouncy, a bit rocky. Crawling nicely and it's definitely nowhere near as slippery as what we faced this morning. Yeah, I'm glad this track's dried out a bit because in the wet this would be horrible. <laughs> Quite rocky underneath. So I've 
plenty of traction. And that's it, up we come. So the other side of the creek crossing, the terrain was slightly different again. The track was actually quite dry, which is a good thing because I reckon that would have been really challenging in the wet. Boy, for a rocky base, there's not a lot of traction there. Holy cow. Nice and dry that climb, so it would have been very interesting on a wet day. It's a little bit tricky because you can't see it's what's a, coming around the corner. It's a little bit blind, isn't it? Simon said in the past they've had to winch themselves off it. <laughs> It'd be an amazing climb when it's a bit wetter and there's a really interesting steep rocky section with quite a bit of loose rock in the wet it would be super difficult. It was very steep, it was very rocky, it was really narrow in parts. The track was quite deep with really steep sides. Popped it into log with the diff locker on and just crawled our way up it. Well, that wasn't too bad. But once we hit the top of the ridge line, it was getting late in the day. The track looked like it just continued on into the bush. We're running out of daylight. We better turn around and start heading back before it's dark. That campsite that we saw just before the creek crossing was awesome. Let's turn around and go back there and call that uh, spot for the night. Coming back down, I was trying to put into practice some of what Mike was telling me over the radio. Let the car do the work, yada, yada, yada. Let the vehicles stay in the ruts, basically perfect line down the hill, so utilising the ruts to guide the car down. Low first, no pedals at all, let the car do all the work. Coming back down the second time made a big difference and yeah, I'll definitely put it into practice in the future. It's always fun to drive back down the hills you've just been up and see how the challenges work in reverse. There's a couple of spots there where I yeah, dropped off those rock steps and really bashed the underbody armour pretty hard. Oh, there goes a gearbox cross member. But yeah, everyone drove down the hill without incident. Jesse, how are you enjoying the day? How was that first job like? Yeah, pretty good. First time for me, so terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. I was expecting to go sliding off into the side of the road, but um, no, Dave handled it really well. Keen to have a go at driving yourself? No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> Come on. Put her in the driver's seat. Absolutely. I reckon give her a go. I'll just stick to my um, BT wagon at home, thanks. Got to do the creek crossing again on the way out, which is always fun. Right, we do. It's something we've been working on for a couple of years now. So we've got here our old aluminium 9.5mm diameter swag pole that's featured in our swags for many years. We've moved to a more advanced composite pole. Now this has taken us two years to develop to a point where it's actually virtually indestructible. These are 10mm with a larger ferrule on the end, so they're actually a lot stronger and they are, like I said, virtually indestructible. So I can turn that on itself, I can go and belt this against my bull bar, I can hit it against concrete or this tree, I can run over it, we can do all sorts of stuff with it, and this will not break. So we've pulled up here for the night at our fantastic little campsite. Someone was nice enough to leave a little bit of wood here, so we got the fire going, pulled out the coffee machine in the back of the car and made everyone a coffee. A nice hot coffee was just what the doctor ordered. I think it's almost time now, maybe for an Irish coffee. We're settled in and ready to rock and roll. It's been really good to get out here today, learn a few new things, put the Ranger through its paces. Most of the tracks we've done today, you could come out and do it in your family four-wheel drive quite easily. You can start with a nice easy road to touring, into your lightweight four-wheel driving, great to learn. If you want to step it up, there's lots more tracks out here. If you want something that's a little bit greasy with clay soil where you're slipping and sliding, it's got that. If you want bog holes, it's got that. But there's a lot of different tracks out here. Come with a friend, don't come on your own so you can pull each other out. Get out here, have a go. Make sure you bring some company with you. Don't come out alone. You want someone out here to help you if something goes wrong. 
to go to Melbourne for the day, get away from the city, get out here in the trees at all, the air is fresh and the driving sensational fun. What a lot of dribble that was. <laughs> Ooh, snap. Wow. Ah, that's awesome. Woo! There we go, kid. Ha, 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 ha.